All right. Father's Day. I think the singing is going to push the virus away. That's what I think. Yeah. Again, y'all sang very well this morning, and you ladies played very well. If you want to be finding in your Bible, Psalms 128, we'll look there in a few moments. But I feel like today I need to just talk about my day just for a minute. Not that I'm a boastful type of person, but God gave me an awesome dad. Um, a father that taught me to, to worship and he taught me how to pray. A father that taught me how to tithe early, early in life. I can remember being taught about tithe. He taught me how wrong should be punished and the right should be rewarded. He taught me how to shoot, Brother Sieber. He taught me how to fish. And I knew just by looking and watching that he was a man of God and is a man of God. And I know these days, uh, I've shared a story with you before about how my father would make things for me, but uh, these days you've seen the commercial with, I don't know, maybe a, a elbow brace, and it's got copper wound in it, you know. And years ago, people, people would wear uh, copper bracelets because of the thought that it helps arthritis. Now, I don't know if it does or not, but I remember when people would wear uh, those copper bracelets, and many times it was guitar pickers, you know, they always uh, had to take care of those hands. And so my dad and I were talking one evening, and, and here's the reason we call him MacGyver. Um, he took out a copper wire, it'd be like house wire, but it was heavy duty, it was a, a heavier gauge, and he soldered a bunch of pennies to this piece of copper and he bent it around and made a bracelet for me out of pennies and again it was one of a kind of course you can you can buy them and I'm sure they were around back then my dad didn't invent it but but uh, I had me a guitar picker copper bracelet you know here we are on Father's Day now, the good thing about the bracelet was it was real pretty, and then about a week later, it turned my wrist green. You know how they do. <clears throat> he said, what if we solder that thing on there? I said, no, I know he was just kidding. Just solder that thing on there, and you won't lose it. <laughs> so here we are today on Father's Day. And many of you have memories of your father. Many of you are looking to your father even today. Uh, for guidance in the things of, of, of this earth and the way we go about things. And so, as you're remembering your father, or as you're looking to your father, um, I want to read here in just a moment. But I heard about a, a young father and his wife and a young daughter of about three, and, and he took his wife and his daughter to Home Depot, I think it was, and so you know how much walking around there is. The little girl got tired. And so daddy picked her up and put her on his shoulders. And before long she was pulling his hair. And he got on to her. He said, Madison, stop pulling my hair. And she said, well, daddy, I'm trying to get my gum back. <laughs> God has ordained three things here on earth. First of all, after creation, He ordained the home when He joined one man and one woman together. He also ordained the government. However, ours has sidestepped the process. He ordained the government. And also, you know, as you sit here today, that God ordained the church and set it in motion. The oldest... And the greatest of these is how that he ordained the home. And as we talk about fathers this morning, I want to think on that point. Now the church is a great institution, but it's only as great as our homes are. 
Our nation is great, not as great as she used to be, I must say, with the things that are happening today. And it has been said that as the home goes, so goes the church. And as the church goes, so goes the nation. Now, I'm not sure who penned that quote, but it's been said more than once. And through the years, much of the burden of having the, the right kind of home has been placed on the mother. Many fathers being absent. Mean fathers, even though they're there, they're still absent. But the Bible places most of the burden right on the father. Think about this for a moment. It's the dad's responsibility to set the tone and the tenor uh, of moral things and spiritual things in the home. It's dad's responsibility to, to see to it that the word of God is honored and revered. It's the dad's responsibility to take the lead on matters of discipline. You just wait till your daddy gets home. It's dad's responsibility to keep the family in church faithfully. Now, I have to mention and, and thank the Lord for Christian mothers because so many times they have to pick up the slack. But we need to remember that dads will answer for their slackness or their lack of being there. It was Joshua who said, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, years ago, uh, we built a home out in the south part of, of Rutherford County. And uh, I don't know, Brother Kyle might uh, know what I mean, but every day I'd go by there to see how the blocks were laid and to see where the floor, I'm sure you guys know, they, they keep coming by. But I'd go by there every day, and when they laid the floor down on top of this foundation that they had built, it was like a, like a big stage or something. And I took that moment just to pray over that foundation. That in this home that God has provided us, that we would worship Him, that we would thank Him. And even early on in the building of that home, I dedicated that home to the Lord. And I don't know who lives there now. I don't know if they are even a Christian type of people. But that home is dedicated to the Lord. And it served us well. Now, as I said, Joshua talks about, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Man, I hope that's your motto for your family today. Uh, again, uh, Eve... In the beginning, she may have been the one who, who found the fruit and, and took the first bite. But when God came to the garden, He asked for Adam. Amen. And we live in a day where it's very difficult to be... Well, it's very difficult to be good. Because of all these things around us, it's very difficult to be a, a good man. It's very difficult to be a good father. And that's why we have to rely on the Lord. We have to use His standard, not our standard. If you notice the standards that people have, they've gone downhill as of late. Our standard should be the Word of God. In Psalms 128, it gives us some tremendous... Um, how could I say it? Tremendous concepts on how to be a good dad and how to be a good support for dad. If you have your word, would you please stand in honor and reverence to the reading of God's word. We'll begin with verse 1 this morning. <clears throat> the psalmist writes, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be 
as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children. And we'll pause there this morning. Go to prayer with me, please. Father, first of all, we praise your name. You are our eternal Father, and we, we thank you for the things that you provide for us. And Father, I thank you for all of these who have come in to assemble today into this house. We praise you for your grace and your mercy. And I just say thank you, Father, for the things that we fail to say thank you for. I pray this morning, Father, that, that you will touch each heart that's here, that the Holy Spirit will move among us and we will understand some things that we didn't understand when we walked in the door. And I pray that you will bless each and every one of us, not through what I say, but through what you bring us, through your word and through this message. Father, thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated this morning. That verse 1 there has the word blessed. And so many times I get confused of whether to say blessed or whether to say blessed as in past tense. But you all know what I mean here. Blessed, in the original text, it was plural. It said it twice. A double portion. Blessed, blessed is the man. Now that's double joy, is it not? You know, blessed means happy. Blessed means joy. But if we don't do and follow through with what this psalm says here, we may be without. We may not have a, a double joy. So if you want to be the best dad that you can be, Sounds like you're signing up for the army, doesn't it? Be all that you can be. If you want to be the best dad that you can be, if you want to be the leader, the leader of the band or the leader of the family, then we need to tune in to this psalm this morning, 128, because we can see what kind of man, what kind of father that God builds. First of all, this morning, there's character character. A good dad will fear God and walk in his ways. And I want to describe that word fear because the old fashioned words uh, meaning character and integrity aren't mentioned very much anymore. What will your child remember of you when you pass, sir? What will your children remember of you I wonder what my daughter will remember of me. Will she remember those things that I bought her as she was growing up? <laughs> How many of us can remember what our dad gave us when we were 12? We don't remember the gifts that much, do we? They will remember your character. They will remember whether your character was good or whether your character was bad. And I want to share a quick story here that talks about the character of the father. And it talks about, or it, talk, it is talking about a, a young man who grew up in a Jewish home in Germany. They went to Sabbath. They went to uh, the temple on Sabbath every Saturday. And they went all the days that this boy had grown up. They went to, to their temple. But as a teenager, the family had to move from one town to another for work. And all of a sudden, they ended up at a Lutheran church. Started attending this Lutheran church. And the teenage boy asked his father, he said, Dad, why are we going to a Lutheran church? We are Jewish. And his dad's response was, Well, we'll bump shoulders with the right people. 
This is all about business. I need to have some business contacts in my job. And, and this is the right type of people. It's high society. We need to be in that church every time the door is open. And the boy later wrote that it was on that day that he lost all respect for his father. And each day this young man started going to museums around about and he uh, frequented museums and he was forming some new ideas in his mind. He conceived a new movement that pushed religion out of the way and later compiled it all in a book. And you know his name as Karl Marx who wrote about communism and Socialism. And it all started the day that he lost respect for his father. Men, sometimes decisions seem small, but they turn out very large. How will you be remembered, Dad? By your character. Look at verse 2 with me. Verse 2. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands... Yours may say, eat the fruit of labor. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. When we obey God, when we do as we are commanded, not as we're asked, but He commands us, He will reward our labor. We will be able to eat the fruit of that labor. And a working man comes home and he eats from his labor. He's able to enjoy the labors of the day or of the week, and he feels fulfilled by providing for his family. Now, I was stuck in that rut right there for a long time because my only focus was providing for the family. I put 110% into my job, and I thought, man, I'm really reaping some fruit for my labor. But I was saying, all I've got to do is provide for my family, provide for my family, provide for my family. And I forgot God. He didn't forget me. But I forgot about Him. I still prayed. I, I was still a Christian. Don't get me wrong. But I wasn't living as I should have. And if a man won't work, neither shall he eat. That's what the Bible says. Now, I'm all for helping someone out. I'm all for the government. I'm glad that they have, are sensitive to help people out who are unable to work physically or mentally. But what I don't like is the old fella that just don't like to work, so he gets on the government plan and, and he don't ever have to work again. So when the, the Bible says that you're to be the provider... It doesn't just mean go to work and make money and build your home for the family. That's all physical stuff. What I was leaving out and what I don't want you fellas to leave out this morning is it's talking about the spiritual things of life. Building a spiritual home for that child and for your spouse. And let me stress the need to, to be careful because it's easy uh, to get in trouble uh, if we are to be the spiritual uh, providers, that spiritual leadership and, and spiritual protection of the home, we need to check up and think about this. And we need to be reminded to keep our family first. Of course, God first, and then your spouse, and then your children. Because your family is too high of a price to pay to just go to work and and bring them the funds and build the home. Because the home means more than just bricks and mortar. Nobody ever said on their deathbed, I wish I'd have made more money. Think about that. Nobody ever said on their deathbed, Oh, I should have stayed at the office a little longer. I should have gone back after supper. Dad, how do you want to be remembered? By your character. If you want to be the leader of the family, if you want to be the leader of the band, like Joshua, God wants you to be that. 
But do you? Do you? We need to be men of character. Secondly, this morning, dad's companionship. You say, what are you talking about? Dad's companionship. I'll throw a little a quick note in here. There was a, a lady that got online and she, she wanted to go into this dating service. And so she put on there, I don't care about looks. I don't care about income or background. All I want is a man of character. And then there was a man on there and he put on there, uh, I'm wanting to date a, a lady, but I don't care about looks or any of that stuff. I just want her to be intelligent. And so that computer grabbed both of them, put them together real quick. They got a note back, said they're already attached to each other. You know why? They were both liars. <laughs> Compulsive liars. Look at verse 3 for me. Verse 3 says, Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Now I want to show you, and I know you're uh, intelligent and smart enough to get this, these two words, thy wife, we can't just let that go by the wayside. We can't just say that's your wife because you know what those two words mean? Think about it. Thy wife. That doesn't say thy girlfriend. It does not say thy fiancé, does it? It does not say thy woman you live with. It does not say the woman of your baby. It does not say that. It says thy wife. What's the context right there? The context is monogamy. The context is thy wife. God blesses, as I said earlier, one man and one woman in holy matrimony. Faithful marriages have to follow that. That's when he blesses a family. That's when he blesses a couple. We got a couple getting married out here. I'm trying to give them all the information I can right now. <laughs> the greatest thing that you can do for your children, men, is love your wife as the Lord loves the church. You are the man that is to be sensitive and, and loving and to be a support to the wife's needs. And first it begins with your relationship with God, as I said. Then your relationship with her. And then your relationship with those children that you're bringing up. Our wives are to be our best friends. It's not the dog that's man's best friend. It's our wives. And wives, you're to be our best friends. And it's not diamonds. I just thought I'd let you know that. But what this says is, mister, you are to be a wall to your wife. You are to be a, a support. And as I said, not, not necessarily physically, but yes, physically too, but spiritually, but emotionally. And too many times the, the man waits for the woman to say, hey, let's go to church. Do you know that? The woman has picked up where we leave off so many times. We ought to be the leaders in spiritual things. We ought to say, yes, this family's going to church. It's Sunday morning. It's like we're asleep. Men, where are the men of God these days? Where are they? We're lacking. They're off at the ball game or at the race. You know, Satan knows how to keep man's attention. You take the games that we played as little boys and just make them bigger. Put it on the racetrack, yeah? Football field's big. I want to be there with the men where we ought to be in the Lord's house. Now, I'm, I'm not. If some of you like to go to the ball game, I'm not preaching against that. As long as you get here a lot of the time, okay? Because I got a wife. One of these Sundays, she'll be off over there. Titans, yay! <laughs> Do you want to be the leader of the family? Then lead. God wants you to be. That's what He made you for. But first, we need to be support for our wife. 
The husband is to be that wall like a wall is to a vine. And to my Cindy, I'm to be her support and her strength, not only uh, physically, but we, I should be something solid, something she can cling on to. And God wants you to be that to your wife, to be a better support than what we have been being. So you see, I'm preaching to myself. Preaching to myself. Thirdly, this morning as we move along, dad's child rearing. Verse 3 again, the second part there. It says, Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Now picture that a moment. You and I may not really associate to the olive tree or the plant itself, but I was reading that a plant that is taken care of correctly can yield fruit for 800 years. 800 years. A beautiful picture there. If it's cultivated properly. We're not raising mushrooms. Some may be. But we're raising olive trees. He's telling us something of worth. They will be something of worth. They have a long life ahead of them if they follow the Lord and His Word. And we want our children to be strong in the Word, don't we? We want our children to, to be well-rooted and, and well-grounded in God's Word. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4, the Bible says, And ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Men, we cannot grow a family and grow children that love the Lord while we just set some rules up and then go off to work. And then we come back home and see how those rules are holding up. We can't do that. So he says, bring them up like a tender olive plant. Cultivate it correctly. Make sure that you have enough time with that child. We have let the TV raise children. We've let these electronic devices raise our children. They want their mama's phone all the time. I'm speaking from experience. Think about this. Your children goes to school for five days a week. They're there, what, six hours, seven hours sometimes? That takes up their time. And then they're either watching TV or got that... Uh, Electronic device in their hand. How much time do you have with that child to teach them anything? Not long. Especially when they're at a tender age. The average father doesn't spend enough time with their teenage child. And we wonder why they don't understand what a true walk with God really is. We wonder why when they graduate high school, they leave the church. Normally, a lot of times. We need to water them. We need to shower our children with time and, and spend time with them. Have a real relationship with them. Do some pruning while you're at it. <laughs> Look at verse 4. Behold, that thus shall be the man be blessed or blessed that feareth the Lord. We've talked about this before, but this word feareth means a sense of awe of His majesty. Amen. Are we in a sense of awe of God? If we're not, we're not in the right place. We need to be in awe of Him, and we need to be in awe of Him so much that a child who watch us live, watches us live would know what to fear the Lord really means. It doesn't happen automatically. We may think, well, we get the Holy Spirit, we're saved, we're, we have salvation, and we're going to automatically be in awe of the majesty. No, we've got to teach that to our children. We need to guide them in fearing the Lord and introduce them to the light of the Son of God. Most of all, we need to 
I had a lot of that spiritual miracle grow. You know what that is? That's prayer. Prayer. And when we follow through as fathers, verse 5 and 6, our reward. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children. Zion, of course, is an ancient Hebrew word that means sanctuary or refuge. But also, it is the hill of Jerusalem where the city of David was built. And in our New Testament thought, our Christian thought, Zion is the heavenly city or the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Look at that verse again. I know there's something there that I didn't mention. And thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. You see, to who this was written, Jerusalem was the capital city of their nation. So, as God's word flows to us, if we do these things and follow the Lord, the Lord will bless us out of Zion, yes, and we shall see the good of the nation all the days of our life. I'm burdened with the nation and the way things are right now. We need to pray hard for our nation. So we've seen Dad's character this morning. We've seen his companion and his child rearing. There's bound to be some men in here today that are saying, well, to be that kind of dad, I had to have that kind of dad. But that's not true. To be that kind of dad, we need to learn from God's Word because we can't do anything about our ancestors and how they were. Can we? I, we don't have time travel yet, so no, we can't do anything about what our ancestors did. But you can break the circle. You can break that cycle, I should say. Be a godly father. Be a godly grandfather. It don't stop when you become a grandfather. Be a godly uncle. Be a man of God. Let's pray this morning. Father, we praise you and thank you once again. Father, I pray this morning that, that this scripture would flow into us and we would absorb it and we would live this week with it in our hearts. Father, I thank you so for, as I said, everything that you do. And if there be one here who does not know you, Father, I pray that they would come this morning, that they would come to your altar. Lead them and guide them in Jesus' holy name. Amen.